Read this after finding a safe place to take refuge. A week after my 75-year-old father's accidental demise, a letter arrived unexpectedly. Enclosed were six keys and a paper indicating the location of a safe deposit box. The message contained only the directive to open the door. I proceeded to unlock all six locations, only to discover a truth so harrowing it made me want to cover my ears. With clenched fists, I set out on a path of revenge against a certain individual. To find out how this gruesome tale unfolds, read on until the end. I am Lisa Watson, 45 years old. My father was the president of a welfare-related company, and I heard that my mother passed away when I was still a baby. As a result, I have no memories of her. The only thing that allows me to feel her presence is a custom-made pair of necklaces that my father had crafted to match hers. Each pendant is designed to form a heart shape when the two are combined. However, it seems my mother's necklace was lost long ago, and the one I have in my possession is the one my father bequeathed to me. As an only child, I married Michael, who works at my father's company, 20 years ago. He is known as a capable employee, and at the time, people around us said things like, now the company is secure. As a homemaker, I enjoy solving puzzles, something my father loved, while maintaining a comfortable life at home. However, things weren't going smoothly. Before we got married, Michael was kind and gentle, but after we tied the knot, his attitude gradually changed. Welcome home. I'll prepare dinner right away, so wait. I ate out, so I don't need anything. I'm going to bed. But we haven't really talked lately. I feel lonely. I confessed and then he retorted. You're acting all cute, and it's disgusting. I hate that kind of thing. With an angry tone, he crawled into bed. His behavior toward me grew colder each day, and discussing starting a family became impossible. As a result, we remained childless, and by the time I turned 40, I had given up on having children. To make matters worse, Three years ago, Michael started coming home extremely late, always reeking of sweet perfume. One day, I couldn't help but ask. Michael, you're not cheating on me, are you? I just go to hostess clubs for business. It's part of my job. Don't complain. But... I began, only to be met with a sharp pain on my cheek. Michael raised his hand, trembling like a demon, bloodshot eyes fixed on me. I stood frozen, like a deer in headlights, unable to utter another word. Anyway, a carefree housewife like you shouldn't meddle in my affairs. Got it? At that moment, with no work experience to speak of, I had no choice but to remain silent. However, my father often used to say, even without hostesses or alcohol, you can build trust with business partners. Because of this, I had reservations about my husband's behavior. So, I confided in James, who was my father's close associate. James, a year younger than me, was like a comforting younger brother when we were together. He listened earnestly to my concerns while maintaining an appropriate distance. James held a high position in my father's estimation, and he occasionally visited our home for work-related matters. One day, I asked him, James, what do you think about business partners going to hostess clubs? His response was measured. Times change, and so do people's approaches to work. True, thank you. I feel better now. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to ask. James assured me. His calm demeanor encouraged me not to dwell on the matter further. However, life took a dramatic turn shortly afterward. It happened one month ago. The morning after my husband left for an overnight business trip, I received a call from the police. 
my beloved father had passed away in an accident. When I arrived, he was already in the mortuary, appearing as if he were merely asleep. Following that, the police were in a frenzy as they arrived, along with the husband, my father's close associate James, and several company executives. Why would this happen? Please tell me everything! I implored tearfully. The investigating officer informed me that my father had jumped from a desolate cliff. Furthermore, traces of sleeping pills were found in his system, and his abandoned seven-seater car was nearby. Inside the car, they discovered a neatly typed suicide note. The letter contained the words, I'm exhausted, and it left the position of the company president in the hands of my husband, Michael. Although it wasn't handwritten, James explained that my father often created memos on his computer, so a typed note wasn't unusual. Based on their experience, the police speculated that my father might have taken the pills to cloud his consciousness before leaping. James wasn't present at the time. No witnesses had come forward yet. I sincerely apologize, despite being in the position of a close associate. Tears welled up in his eyes, but he managed to hold back. Even my usually cold husband, Michael, gently embraced my shoulder during this difficult moment. However, my father, who presided over a large number of employees, left behind an abundance of tasks for those who remained. In the days that followed, chaos reigned within the company. For now, my husband assumed the role of president and James seamlessly transitioned into his right-hand man. Meanwhile, I found myself caught up in handling matters related to relatives and acquaintances. Times like these make me wish I had a sibling. I thought. As an only child, having lost both my parents and feeling a vague sense of loneliness despite my husband's presence, I grappled with my emotions. One week had passed since my father's departure from this world when a letter arrived addressed to me. Inside the envelope was another, bearing the cryptic message, read this after finding a safe place. Curiosity peaked, I opened it immediately. Six keys and a slip of paper with the location of a safe deposit box spilled out. A single note accompanied them, open all the doors. Only then will you discover the truth. Recalling my father's love for puzzles and feeling the weight of our shared bloodline, I found a glimmer of relief amidst my melancholy. Hmm. Intriguing. I thought. From that day on, between household chores, I visited six different safe deposit boxes, unlocking each one. What unfolded was beyond my wildest expectations. Could this be real? I gasped, unraveling a truth that sent shivers down my spine. And as the events of the past played out like a flickering lantern in my mind, tears traced down my cheeks. I can't stay idle, even if it leads to a heartbreaking conclusion. I resolved. With my beloved's feelings weighing on my shoulders, I set forth. One day, a month after my father's funeral, my husband returned home unusually early and offered me wine. It was a gesture he had never made before. Well, this is unusual, what's the occasion? Actually, James mentioned that you like wine, so he gave it to me. Really? I said, surprised. When my husband pulled out the bottle, I did wonder what was going on. However, I indeed had a palate for both red and white wines, having conversed about wine with James before. James really knows everything about our family, doesn't he? With that, he disappeared into the kitchen, carrying the bottle and opener. He returned to the living room with a glass of wine in hand. I still have some work to do, so go ahead, Lisa. Thank you. Hold on a moment. I want to prepare some snacks. I retreated to the kitchen, busying myself with preparations before returning to my seat. Cheers. 
I said, raising my glass to take a sip. My husband's expression twisted, and he squinted at me. Seeing his reaction out of the corner of my eye, I couldn't help but smile inwardly. One hour later, my husband scrutinized my face suspiciously. Hey, has anything changed? Not really. Oh, wait, is it because I'm still awake? Surprising, isn't it? Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? I was just... Enough with the act. You drugged the wine with sleeping pills, planned to drive me somewhere, and then throw me off a cliff like my dad. But it won't work. In truth, I had been investigating my husband's room until this day. I found a bottle of sleeping pills hidden in his desk drawer. I discreetly replaced the pills with identical-looking supplements and returned them to their original place. His feigned trip to pour wine in the kitchen was actually an opportunity to mix the sleeping pills into the wine. You! Why are you snooping around my things? Those pills are for when I can't sleep. I don't need your transparent lies. Actually, something like this was sent to me recently. I dramatically spread out the letter and six keys on the table. I opened all the doors. Inside were thin papers with scattered words. I layered the six flimsy sheets, and lo and behold, they formed a complete sentence. The one who killed the president is Michael Watson. Danger is also approaching you. Take a good look. I pointed at the finished message. Who the hell sent this? But the answer was about to be revealed. James, his close associate, calmly stepped forward. The sender was me. Earlier, when I went to fetch snacks from the kitchen, I secretly messaged James and had him hide near the entrance. I had doubts about the president's suicide. So, I discreetly investigated various aspects. You are doing that? The day after we learned about the former president's passing, you brought a woman to the president's office, right? I was nearby at the time. And James added that he deduced from the conversation between Michael and the woman at that time that my husband had killed my father in order to take over the presidency. Upon the sudden revelation by his close associate, my husband couldn't help but roll his eyes and avert his gaze. I grabbed Michael's shoulders and shook him. And you were after my life just to get your hands on the entire fortune? The woman seemed to think all those affairs were mere jokes, but I believed it was the truth. He confessed that he had no concrete evidence until he could consult the police, but he wanted to inform me somehow. Hence, he chose to send a letter. However, my husband remained defiant. Why are you blindly believing what this guy says? Taking a deep breath, I decided to reveal the hidden truth. Actually, I began, ready to share the untold revelation. Once upon a time, my dad fell in love with my mom, who grew up in a children's foster care facility. However, due to strict parents, their marriage faced opposition. In the end, they married without consent, and I was born. What does that have to do with anything now? Please listen to the whole story. James interjected. My husband, wearing a stern expression, reluctantly took a seat nearby. However, during my dad's absence on a business trip, his strict parents initiated divorce proceedings without consent, leaving only my mom to be expelled from the house. Ha! Huh? But I thought she had passed away. That was a lie concocted to conceal our family secret. I revealed. Apparently, my mother, pressured by my father's parents, tearfully withdrew when they told her. A future president's wife with someone like you would tarnish our family reputation. To make matters worse, 
I, then just one and a half years old, was forcibly separated from my reluctant mother, all for a selfish reason, to be the heir presumptive in case my father didn't have any male grandchildren in the future. Furthermore, my father was fed a false story by his parents. Your wife left you after having an affair. But the truth was different. No wonder my husband muttered. I had no idea about the president's past. Understandably, this was a closely guarded secret known only to a select few relatives. I had only recently learned about it myself. Now, here's the most crucial part. What? Is there more? Stop dragging it out and just tell me. Frustrated, he raised his voice. Ignoring his impatience, I glanced at a certain person. In fact, at that time, my mom was already pregnant with another child. That child is now sitting right next to you, James. Wait, so you two are siblings? James nodded silently. My mother, who had been cast aside, suffered from poor health and remained bedridden. Meanwhile, my father, unable to accept the betrayal of the woman he loved, never remarried and tirelessly searched for my mother's whereabouts. Thirty years have passed. My father visited a rundown apartment. Dad finally found mom's whereabouts. However, she was critically ill. They reunited briefly before she passed away. At that moment, James and his father each discovered for the first time that James's company president was his own father, while his father learned that he had a son. My mother hoped I'd pursue a socially impactful career, so I chose to work in the welfare sector at this company. James joining the company was purely coincidental, but perhaps our mom orchestrated our connection. James, his eyes welling up, revealed that my father had once considered promoting him to a high-ranking position and publicly acknowledging their relationship. However, James declined, wanting to forge his own path. Revealing this would cause a stir, and mom wouldn't have wanted that. Besides, I want to succeed on my own terms. Despite rejecting my father's offer, James's exceptional abilities led him to become the president's trusted right-hand man even without nepotism. The truth had finally come full circle. On my mother's monthly Memorial Day, the president would unfailingly visit my home to share memories of my mother. And he was planning to come over the day before his fatal accident, right? Yes. But for some reason, he didn't show up without any notice. It was unlike him. According to James, my father always called when plans changed. However, this sudden silence struck James as unnatural. As he delved deeper, he uncovered evidence pointing to my husband as the culprit. That's why he sent me that cryptic letter. It's all nonsense. Where's the proof that he's the president's son? Who would believe such a fabricated story? Michael's anger flared directed at both of us. Naturally, I didn't blindly accept James's account. I had seen irrefutable proof of our sibling relationship. Hey, can you show it? I asked. James took out a necklace, which had been lost a long time ago, from his pocket. He had been keeping it carefully since our mother passed away. When combined with the one I have, it forms a heart, and it is undoubtedly the one that our father and mother had custom made. Is this just a coincidence? Doesn't this prove James is my brother? Even if it does, people lie. Besides, there's no guarantee. If you doubt it, we can do a DNA test with our father. I asserted. Since my father had recently passed away, there were plenty of heirlooms suitable for testing. My unwavering confidence seemed to unsettle my husband. Suddenly, he crumpled a thin piece of paper with a coded message. Why did he go to such elaborate lengths? Ah, uh, 
Well, that was to ensure that even if you stumbled upon it, you wouldn't easily recognize it. James had discerned that Michael, despite appearing competent at work, had a tendency to delegate inconvenient tasks to others. So, as a precaution, he assumed that even if Michael found this letter, he would assign it to a trusted subordinate. Interestingly, knowing my penchant for puzzles, James believed I would decipher the message. This trick was something the president devised during his lifetime. He'd proudly say, how's that? Quite clever, isn't it? Come to think of it, my dad always jotted down interesting ideas. He once mentioned wanting his daughter to tackle a mystery like this. And so, with this backstory, my brother and I learned of my husband's crime. Over time, we meticulously searched for clues in his room. We discovered evidence that he had fabricated a false suicide note on his computer. Additionally, James checked Michael's motorcycle ride history using an app. It revealed a one-way trip from the accident site back home. You loaded the motorcycle onto the car, pushed my dad off the cliff, and then used the bike to return home. I exclaimed. Recalling the day before my father's demise, my husband claimed to be on a business trip. However, according to James there was no such task. Your marriage to me was probably just about money and status. On the day when Michael secretly brought his affair partner into the president's office, James discreetly followed the woman. It turned out that she was a hostess from a cabaret club. Later, James infiltrated the club undercover. The woman, smitten with James, readily spilled the truth. Why harm my dad at all? I couldn't wait until the old man kicked the bucket. Despite Michael's repeated attempts to retire, my father adamantly refused. It seemed my husband couldn't bear to wait for his demise. His selfishness ignited a fiery rage within me. We'll share our findings with the police and request a reinvestigation. But you haven't reported it yet. Could it be because you still care about me? My husband retorted spouting nonsensical excuses even at this point. James, equally baffled, remained silent. Going to the police would have resolved it through the legal system, wouldn't it? But I wanted to take matters into my own hands and avenge our dad. When I confessed my inner turmoil, Michael finally seemed to grasp the situation he was in. He apologized tearfully on the spot. Michael's face was a mess of tears and runny nose as he looked up at me. His body trembled uncontrollably. However, neither I nor my brother had any intention of forgiving Michael, who had sent our father to the afterlife. What you've done is a serious crime. But! But please forgive me! Prepare to experience despair. No! Afterward, with James's assistance, I handed the sobbing Michael over to the police. In the subsequent interrogation, Michael admitted to taking our father's life. With the intervention of a lawyer between him and me, the divorce was finalized. The $20,000 compensation was paid from his savings. According to reports, Michael, now confined behind bars, appears to be a mere shell of his former self. The woman, aware of his marital status, had an affair with him, and she has also demanded alimony of $10,000. Meanwhile, James, publicly acknowledged as the president's biological son, has assumed the role of the president, his past accomplishments duly recognized. I'll be assisting with administrative tasks at the company. From now on, my brother and I will join forces to uphold the legacy our father left behind. How did you find this story? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Until next time in our next video.